three-stranded cord is not easily broken. Alice, my mathematical sweetheart over here, has always said that the answer, <laughs> well, her mathematics is just a little different than the, than the norm, that's all. It's true. She says the answer is always three. Well, the Word of God says that a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. And in order to understand the power of God, there are three things that you truly need to put together, to entwine together, to get the strength of this faith, authority, and power. Listen to this now. Um, 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Then Jesus said in Matthew, Matthew 28, 18, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. There's authority, right? Mm -hmm. Listen to this one now. We talked about this last week, about the kingdom of God. Yes. For the kingdom of God, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4, 20, for the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. All right? So those three things, the faith, the authority, and the power, combine to bring us to a place where we truly walk and live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you can't take, again, I've been talking about, you can't take credit for this. This is the work of God. Oh, and all I want in my life is the work of God in my life. He's at work to work His will and His pleasure in our lives. He is the potter and we are the clay. He is the one that is doing the work, therefore He gets the credit, right? For who regards you as superior, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 4, 7. What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you have not received it? We can't boast in what God has done, all right? We have to boast in God. If any man boasts, let him boast in the Lord, right? So God equips you for what he calls you for. Every Christian, if you've been following this, this series in search of Christianity, you know how many times I've talked about the fact, the most important fact, is that every single Christian, every true believer, has a ministry. Yes, there is a fivefold ministry, but ministry is not restricted to that fivefold ministry. As a matter of fact, the, the only ministry of the fivefold ministry is to equip the rest for the work of service, for their ministry. So if God is going to give us what we need to do this, well, it says he's given us faith. Romans 12, 3 says, For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. God's given you the faith. You've been given authority. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. The words of Jesus Christ. So he's given you faith, and he's given you authority. And he has given you the power. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of discipline, a sound mind. Let's try and connect the dots here, so to speak, all right? We need to see how this operates in reality, in real life, how this works. Matthew 8, 5 through 10. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, imploring him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, fearfully tormenting. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled. And said to those who were following, Truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. The centurion didn't say he had faith. He said he understood authority. The first thing is that centurion calls Jesus Lord. Now I want to tell you something. Centurions, Roman centurions in the time of Jesus were powerful people. And they didn't call many people other than Caesar Lord. But this centurion came to Jesus Christ, this humble carpenter, and said, Lord. 
Nothing's going to happen in your life until you recognize the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then the servant said, I'm not worthy. That's humility. If we're not walking in humility, may God never, if you're not having walking in humility, may God never trust you with power. Because if you're not humble, humble before the Lord, you'll use the power for your own, to serve your own purposes, not God's purposes. And thinking about that, people who are in authority, if you have, if you're aware of people that you have to deal with and they're in authority, you have to trust them. That's well, faith. One of the things about authority, and this is what the centurion was saying, he said, you know, if I tell somebody to, to go, he goes. Yeah. If I tell somebody to come, he comes, right? right? Because we are called to be submissive to authority, right? But think about this. That the centurion said to Jesus, for I also am a man under authority. I love that word, also. That means he recognized that Jesus was under authority. Yes. And Jesus truly was a man under authority. That's right. he, he didn't speak a word that he had not heard from the Father. He didn't do anything that the Father had not showed him to do. And think about it. Jesus, if you think that he felt like in the, in the natural to go to, to the cross, you better get back and read John 17, where he prayed. And he prayed a prayer so, so difficult that he sweat blood doing it. And he said, Father, this cup could pass. Let it. Oh. But he said, no. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. That's the humility that led to Jesus saying of this centurion, that's the greatest faith. Mm -hmm.